Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Friday. It is June 12th. Thank you so much for being with us. And this story has yeah. gained a lot of traction on social media. Spurs Lonnie Walker has cut off his signature haircut. Yeah, you remember Lonnie, uh, one of the Spurs favorites now, one of the fan favorites now here in, in San Antonio. And he has really stepped up during the, the uh, protests and the riots. He went out to help clean up. Mm -hmm. And now we find out why he got his hair cut. He revealed some very personal things that happened to him when he was a young man. This happened back in the fifth grade, and it's now been made public by him. It was posted by him when he got his hair cut. And this is one of the reasons why he got it. And it's very revealing and very courageous for him to reveal this. And I'll, I'll just read a go, quote. Go ahead and read the, the quote that he posted that he on was talking social about. media. He said, I was... I was sexually harassed, raped, and abused, and even got accustomed to it because being at that age, he's talking about when he was in fifth grade, you don't know what is what. I was a gullible, curious kid that didn't know what the real world was. I had a mindset that my hair was something that I can control. My hair was what I can make and create and be mine and it gave me confidence. So now you can see he's sporting a short hairdo and I just want to say thank you to Lonnie for being so vulnerable and what you did and being so honest is so brave of you. And also when you're honest like that about your sexual abuse that you've gone through, um, you're also inspiring others to be honest and seek help. So way to go Lonnie, we applaud you. So, so the hair that you see him in when he when he's standing there with the commissioner and when you saw him running up and down the court, that was that was what he could control. It's a, it's he amazing it that that's, that's where yeah. he went. And now he's like relieved himself of that, released yeah. all that. And he said he, he even talks about how he has had some inner demons and he was able to kind of deal with it during this this uh, time with the coronavirus. So it's got to be free. What a very special young man. And then, of course, like I mentioned before, we saw him go out and be a part of the the, the cleanup, the cleanup or the efforts. protests, taking water to people who were out there volunteering and, and volunteering himself and, and cleanup. I mean, he's 21 years old. I know. What and a mature, mature young man. Unbelievable young man. Thank and you for so, your bravery, Lonnie. Definitely so. And for what he's done for San Antonio. Incredible young man. So thank you for stepping up. Let's take a look at our rundown. The San Antonio community is likely seeing a second wave of COVID-19 infections. The timing coincides with the reopening of the state and the Memorial Day holiday. Up to 200,000 people could die from the contagion by September. We opened up with when the case level the levels were still quite high. We did not have enough testing in most states, so we're now seeing the consequences. With thousands of people expected to attend, the Trump campaign has issued a legal disclosure by attending the rally. You and any guests volunteer voluntarily assume all risks related to exposure to COVID-19 and agree not to hold Donald J. Trump for president or any affiliates liable for any illness or injury. A 36-hour manhunt in Central California's wine country ended in a deadly shootout between police and a heavily armed man. We wanted him to turn himself in. We wanted a peaceful ending to this. Hundreds of people in Seattle occupying a now abandoned police precinct. The people recognize that this building is the is the people's. You know, we pay for it with our taxes. The the Senate is taking steps to remove Confederate names from military bases. A full Senate could vote on the issue this year. Sets up a showdown with the president who has said he won't even consider renaming the bases. Seattle coach Pete Carroll was quoted yesterday saying a team is, quote, interested in signing Kaepernick, but he did not elaborate. Groups have asked Band-Aid to come up with more diverse bandages for years. The new colors will include light, medium, and deep shades of brown and black. The maker of this germ-killing robot says it disinfects the host hotel room in just six minutes. Its UV light is nearly 100% effective at killing coronavirus. Two bear cubs that captured exactly what 2020 has been like so far. They're on the beach in Alaska. One bear gives up and puts a paw over its face while the other decides to just snuggle. <laughs> That's the Pretty cutest much. thing. <laughs> like, much sums he's like, I right can't there. do this. The other one's like, we can do this. We're going to the beach and we're calling it a day. No. Perfect. How about how about beach weather today? Oh, Justin, that's I mean, I know, I know we don't have a beach here, but I mean, it's 77 degrees. It's, Mike was saying it's a little below average. Yeah, you know, we, cool got, we got down to 63 this morning, and so our average low is 72. 
That's uh, pretty impressive for June. So we're going to keep that going the next couple days. Weekend looks great. It is good beach weather because temperatures will be warm during the afternoon. Right now we have jumped up to 77, so we've already jumped up about 14 degrees there. 77 in New Braunfels, 66 Kerrville, 74 in Uvalde, and we'll be up around 94 degrees today. I don't want to call this a boring forecast, but there's not a lot going on. Uh, in, in the overall pattern. So things are going to stay pretty quiet going into next week. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what we're seeing outside right now. Clear skies, temperatures again, uh, 77. Dew point is at 55. That's still in a very comfortable range. And the winds today will be light east northeasterly at about six miles per hour at the moment. Uh, 94 there again is your high temperature. Sunny skies, sunny this weekend. There are a few changes next week. We, we you know, get couple clouds, stuff like that. We'll talk more about that forecast coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. We'll Trans Guide, I-10 at Ralph Fair Road, and that is a backup. Yeah, backup. We think it's for construction. So if you're headed out that way, just make sure to plan that into your timeline. Well, developing out of Houston this morning, authorities are investigating the cause of an explosion at a bar early this morning. According to our sister station KPRC, several people heard the explosion at bar 5015 around 445 this morning. Investigators believe this was likely a gas explosion. A food truck near the area also destroyed. Crews now working to clean up debris along the streets. Well, back here at home, top stories we are following this morning. We're still waiting to learn the name of the man killed after police say he was hit by a car in the city's east side. It happened just after 10 last night in the 1000 block of Southeast Loop 410, not far from Lord Road and Rigsby Avenue. Police say a woman driving in a red Chevy Malibu didn't see the man and hit him. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say the driver stopped to help and will not be facing any charges. Well, 2020 has been quite the crazy year, so let's not eat it's so it's been easy to forget that it's also election season. Yeah, the primary runoff election is fast approaching and the deadline to register to vote is just around the corner. Monday, your last chance to get registered. Election day is coming up July 14th, but early voting begins June 29th. There was several ways. There are still several ways you can go about registering. You can fill out a voter registration application online, print it and mail it to the voter registrar in your county. You can also register in person at the county registration office. We have more information on the homepage right now on KSAT.com. San Antonio health officials are warning that the Alamo City is experiencing a second wave of the coronavirus. Nearly 200 new COVID-19 cases were reported yesterday in Bear County. Now, Mayor Ron Nirenberg is asking people who attended a protest or even went to a store that seemed too crowded to get tested. You don't need to have symptoms to get a test. You're actually encouraged to call the hotline at 210-207-5779. There are also a couple of walk-up testing sites that are available today. Metro Health has free testing at the Roosevelt High School Gym on Walsham Road and the Allen Elementary Cafeteria on Dumont Drive. The walk-up testing will happen today and tomorrow from 10 a.m. till 2 o'clock this afternoon. But remember, each site can only test 175 people per day. Well, despite the rise in cases, the Lone Star State is entering another phase of reopening today. Restaurants can now expand their occupancy to 75 percent. Tables should still be kept at least six feet apart or four feet apart if a barrier is used to separate the tables. There can't be more than 10 people at a table and hand sanitizing stations should be made available throughout the restaurant. Also today, other businesses that have been required to operate at 50 percent capacity can increase to 75 percent, but only if they live in a county with 10 or less active coronavirus cases. In your morning headlines, the Indianapolis Police Department is investigating an arrest video that has gone viral. It shows several officers hitting a woman with batons and rubber bullets and pushing another woman to the ground. The incident happened back on May 31st when officers were enforcing the county's curfew. The video shows officers handcuffing a 21 year old woman. At first, the woman stands still, but then she starts resisting, trying to break free. That's when an officer yells, hit her. She was shot three times with rubber bullets and struck five times in the legs by two officers with batons. I have not heard from uh, uh, the young lady. Uh, I don't know if she's actually made a complaint, but in this case, I really didn't need her to make the complaint. I, I saw what I saw and I'm doing my best to try to, to address that. 
Prosecutors have now launched a criminal investigation into the incident. The officers involved are still on the job, but the police chief says they have been reassigned to a different detail. Well, a group of police officers in Chicago also under investigation this morning for a different kind of incident. They were caught on security video lounging for about five hours. Here it is. The video shows as many as 13 officers, including three supervisors, eating popcorn, talking on the phone, and even sleeping. This while protests and looting happened across the city in the wake of the killings of jo or the killing of George Floyd. It happened on June 1st inside the campaign office of U.S. Representative Bobby Rush which had been broken into the night before. These individuals did indeed abandon their responsibilities and their obligation and their oath to serve and protect. Now, I've been a policeman for 34 years and I've never been as embarrassed as I am right now. The Chicago Police Department has launched, launched an internal investigation into the incident. The city's mayor says she wants the, quote, strongest possible action, end quote, taken against the officers involved. A teenager in New York saving his mother's life as she struggled to breathe during an asthma attack. The dramatic rescue was caught on camera. The woman suffered an asthma attack and started choking, her lips turning purple. Surveillance video shows her son quickly jumping into action and starting CPR. The boy is a New York Police Department Explorer, a program giving teenagers an introduction to a career in law enforcement. He's been part of the program for a little over a year and says his training kept him focused until the EMTs arrived. The woman woke up in the hospital two days later and was given the news that her son had saved her life. And I'm sure she's very grateful yeah, for her son. So. 909, 77 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, what would you do if you found an alligator swimming around your pool? It happened to a family in Florida, how they were able to get the gator back to its pond. And records uncovered by KSAT 12 Defenders show Bear County staff were misinformed on the coronavirus relief grant. The latest Defenders investigation coming up later on in this hour. And look at that. Stocks have jumped today after going down 18 points yesterday, making a little rebound today, up 760 plus points so far. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Triceratops. Ooh. My name is in it. Get it? Triceratops. Uh, okay. There What's you your go. favorite dinosaur? Uh, T-Rex. T-Rex, they have little arms. Yeah, but, the, but they're, they're very, very scary. scary. <laughs> so your chance to see one, I guess, coming up, huh? Yeah, you can take a drive with dinosaurs at the Freeman Coliseum this weekend. Jurassic Quest is back in the Alamo City, but this time the traditional exhibit has been transformed into an interactive drive through safari experience. Alisa, Alicia Barrera is live. She's, she's dressed like she's going on a safari. Very so cute, perfect. Alicia. I'm going on a safari. There you go. Okay, before we get, so I've heard that y'all know a little bit about the different dinosaurs. Can you give me your best dinosaur roar? Ooh. Rawr. I like that mine was deeper <laughs> than David's. <laughs> y'all both sound great. Mine, I won't even do it right now. With me, we have the experts over here, Safari Sarah and Captain Caleb, and they have a very special guest for this very special Jurassic Quest exhibit. Sarah? Hey, guys. So this is Tyson. He's our baby T-Rex, one of three baby dinosaurs we have at Jurassic Quest. But he's not actually the main attraction here because we have over 70 life-size dinosaurs and aquatic reptiles in our brand new Ancient Oceans exhibit that you can drive through. And then we know that already these two weekends are sold out. But for yes. those that are coming, y'all do ask that they bring their masks just in case they do have that chance to step out and take a picture. Yes, ma'am, exactly. We are going to be making sure that we're enforcing social distancing and keeping our community safe. But there will be a curbside store at the end, so even if you had some dinosaur lovers that weren't able to come, you can get some merchandise for them to bring home. So bring masks if you want to, and you can even get out to take a picture in our exhibit. And then behind us, um, our photographer here, Azian, was showing a special friend back there. Who is that? All the way back there. All the way. That is our Megalodon, and he is our crowning jewel of ancient oceans, reaching over 50 feet long. 
And what do you think people need to know before they head over here? Because this is going to be a fun-filled, packed weekend. Definitely. One, I would say make sure that you clear up some room on your phone for photos because you're going to want to take a bunch of them. And also just make sure you bring drinks for yourself, food for yourself if you want to eat while walking through or driving through the dinosaurs. And if you miss tickets for this weekend, don't worry because we will be coming around soon. So go online to JurassicQuest.com to find out where we'll be coming up. Safari Sarah, Captain Caleb, and then also Baby Tyson, the T-Rex. Thank you so much, <laughs> you guys. You. Now it's time for me to give you the best roar. You ready, okay, you guys? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Out here with the best roar? Uh -huh. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. All right. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Back to you guys. Super Thank you. cute. I'm, I was, I was like, you know, she's got to do her roar. I'm kind of scared. Oh, terrified. <laughs> Ooh. Very good. It looks like a fun place. I know, and the, uh, the, the little shark in the back. It's like as big as a school bus. Whoa. The megalodon. That's a big thing. Hey, it's going to be a good weekend to get out there and enjoy some dinosaurs. Yeah. Justin, it is. were you were you a dinosaur nerd? I was a huge dinosaur nerd. I, I loved it. Okay, give me your top. Yeah. Top three dinosaurs. Your, oh. Where's your dinosaur roar? Well, that, well. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got that covered. Come on. But okay, give us your dinosaurs. Brontosaurus okay. was, he was the big he, one. He was a tall one. The tall of ones. Of course he, you love the Brontosaurus. Yeah, I yes. <laughs> What does he sound like? What's the noise it makes? I don't know. It made like a roar. Yeah, it was like. It was a, like a yeah. Come on, Justin. No, it's not happening. Come it sounded on. like a French horn, according to Jurassic Park. <laughs> French <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got a junior meteorologist this morning. A couple notes, guys. So we do this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, we're going to take a listen to Colton this morning. There is going to be a very bad storm today, so please stay inside your houses. If you are on a hill like over here, then you are safe. But if you are down a hill, you need to stay inside your houses. If you do not see a flood, then it is fine to still stay out and play inside the rain. Now look at the rain. It's raining so hard that, see down there? It might be raining really bad. But over there, it's not raining that bad. So please stay in your house if you are, up, up, if you are down a hill. If you are up a hill, you can still play outside. But downhouses, please stand inside. <laughs> he get the storm chaser out. Oh, he has a future in live weather reporting. Love that was that. yes. He's that our was next amazing. storm chaser. I, I know. Love that. Over Incredible. here, it's running bad. Over Incredible. here, not so much. I'm moving to the top of the hill. That's what I know. I know. He, I know. Great he told us how to be safe. That was a great report. Teach us about gravity. There, he's he's right about it all, Colton. <laughs> Great job, my friend. Obviously, hmm. he did that. But, uh, but you notice he was under the porch when he did all that. He wasn't about to get wet. Smart He's guy, a smart so. reporter. There so you go. That's what you got to do. <laughs> We've got more junior meteorologists coming up next week. <laughs> Let's take a look at the lows this morning. 63 here in San Antonio. It was another great morning. That's the second morning in a row. 52, Kerrville, 54, Fredericksburg. We had those clear skies, dry air. Perfect ingredients to get temperatures to go below average. Now, this afternoon, we're going to be pretty close to the average high because it will warm up. 94 is what we're thinking today. Uh, temperatures uh, being in the mid 90s, even upper 90s in some cases, pretty similar to yesterday. There's not a lot of change here. We're in a stagnant weather pattern and uh, the dew point still a pleasant category. We're in the mid 50s this morning. That's probably where we'll stay most of the day. It may jump up a little bit tomorrow, but still low 60s. That's not that bad considering we could see dew points in 70s. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep that great weather going into the weekend and uh, even early next week. 77 right now. Dew point is at 55. We've got an east northeasterly breeze, very light at about six miles per hour. And the visible satellite picture shows uh, we've got a little bit of cloud cover uh, up across parts of Oklahoma, but most of Texas is really pretty quiet. And uh, where we're going to see clear skies uh, again into the afternoon. This is what strikes me, though. Most of the country is just really quiet. This weather pattern is. Uh, Pretty much like a summer weather pattern. You just you're just not seeing much there. No areas of low pressure moving through, so it's quiet across the entire country. And let's take a look at what's going on down there at the coast. If you have plans uh, to go down to the coast uh, this weekend, looks like it'll be pretty quiet going forward, and we'll get those temperatures in the 90s down there too. Uh, and really, the, 
it's perfect beach weather this weekend. We're thinking 93 Friday, 92 Saturday, 93 on Sunday. If you're heading down to Rockport, Port A or Corpus. Uh, here's a look at the upper level winds uh, through time here. High pressure stays in control and that's really what's keeping us pretty quiet. This doesn't change much and uh, It'll still be there even into next week. The one change we will see is that we'll get more of a southeasterly wind uh, by early next week. And uh, we're looking at the coast again. But forecast for today, up around 94 northeasterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear skies. And then look for 94 Saturday, 94 on Sunday, which, by the way, is Flag Day. And uh, 95 Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe a little bit cooler because we had in some clouds. But uh, basically 94, 95 every day. Take a bit. <laughs> We'll take it. That's great weather. Thank you so much, Justin. Yep. He, he wanted to say it was kind of a boring forecast, but he can't say that. But I can say it. It's kind of a boring forecast. Hey, so I'll take a boring forecast as long as low humidity, not too hot. It's great. Still ahead on GMSA at night, intense boat rescue caught on camera, and a slimy, uninvited guest takes a dip in a family pool. Those stories coming up in the days. Take a look at this. Welcome back. 25 minutes after 9 o'clock, a loaded boat gets knocked over, dumping passengers into the water. Thankfully, nearby rescue officials were ready to spring into action. Plus, a family in Florida finds an alligator taking a swim in their pool. Here's CNN's Jeremy Roth with today's Look at This. Watch rescuers save nine people from a sinking boat off Florida's coast. The boat was being towed to safety when strong currents snapped the tow line. That caused the boat to begin to roll and submerge, pulling the passengers into the water. Officials quickly sprang into action using wave runners to perform rescues near the capsized vessel. Three adults and three children were pulled from the water and the rest were helped to safety. Two adults were treated for minor injuries and the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office said all passengers were wearing life jackets. Another tense water operation unfolded in Florida, but this one involved a family's backyard pool when a scaly scofflaw was caught going for an unsanctioned swim. Carlos Rivera discovered a small alligator had somehow managed to make its way into his lanai before taking a dip and scurrying back out. And when we came back outside, he wasn't here any longer. He was outside in the yard under the hammock. With some help, Rivera was able to trap the unwanted guest in a trash bin and set it loose in a nearby pond where it'll likely do a a little less instigating and a little more alligating. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. So I went from the pool to the hammock. There you go. Perfect, perfect day. I know. Well, there's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. A Texas man inviting everyone to ask him about racism. The group formerly known as Lady Antebellum changing his name and several San Antonio outdoor pools are opening soon. Eric Hernandez has a look at what's trending on KSAT.com. Coming up. I'm Dylan Collier. Coming up, the confusion surrounding Bear County's request for coronavirus relief money. And why is Commissioner Kevin Wolf so mad at me? It's your fault for misinterpreting that information. Well, welcome back. The state of Texas making close to $40 million available for local governments to tackle coronavirus relief efforts. But the Bear County's application process has been marked by confusion. It's grant staff given bad information about whether the money was allocated before they even applied for it. And now a Bear County commissioner lashing out at the case at 12 defenders for reporting on the issue. But that is what he wrote. OK, and I'm That's telling what we're you looking at. that that is incorrect. Unfortunately, OK, he said that. Unfortunately, you were going down the line of reporting it. I'm telling you but he wrote right it. now, I'm telling you right now, but that's not true. I know it's not And that's true. not how it's going to work. Dylan Collier faces off with that elected official to bring you the latest Defenders report. Uh, colleagues, the reason I, you know, I rarely pull things from consent. Um, On June 2nd, longtime Bear County Commissioner Kevin Wolf made the decision to remove a grant application from consent agenda and discuss it in open court before voting on it. What followed was a nearly five minute diatribe. Quite frankly, lazy and do not do their homework. That Wolf would later admit and leave themselves open to being used was aimed at this reporter. That's exactly what has taken place here. I, and it's a discredit to their industry when individuals within that industry don't do their homework, become lazy, 
and report things that are just flat false. Actually, we hadn't reported anything at that point, just asked questions about this April announcement from the office of the governor. It notified local entities that they could apply for $37.8 million. The federal funding is meant to help lessen the impact of the coronavirus pandemic and will be divided up regionally, with just over $3 million going to the Alamo Area Council of Government section, which includes the city of San Antonio and Bear County. It allows uh, the city of San Antonio and Bear County to uh, go out and, and uh, de deploy resources to help respond to COVID-19. Competition for funding is stiff. The city alone has applied for $2.6 million. Add that to the more than $1 million requested by Bear County, and you've already exhausted ACOG's entire award. And that's without even accounting for other entities that fall under ACOG and may have asked for funds. Bear County officials discussed what would likely be a potential slim down final award during a virtual grant review meeting May 20th. So basically three, three million for a region that includes 13 counties. For context, the sheriff's office alone has already spent close to $1 million housing inmates who should have been transferred to state prisons and treatment centers, but can't because of the ongoing pandemic. This grant, the only opportunity from the state so far that could reimburse some of those expenses. Adding to the budget angst was information given to multiple county grant employees by ACOG's Homeland Security and Criminal Justice Coordinator James Menz, who on May 4th wrote that it was a rolling allocation style grant. First come, first serve. Men 16 days later went a step further and said a majority of the money, $2.7 million, had already been placed in fund hold status, with another $270,000 already requested through the state's online grant system. The remarks, which officials now confirm were incorrect, prompted Bear County's grant coordinator to say she would move forward with their application, even though it seems like there is nothing left. Whether that was because somebody at ACOG didn't know what they were doing, uh, the reality is, is none of those dollars have been allocated. Wolf, a longtime ACOG board member and part of its executive committee, repeatedly accused the defenders of reporting that the county had somehow messed up, even though his rant, you did not know what you were doing, and his face-to-face -face comments came before the defenders had even started writing the story. We are on the same this is a page. scary time for people. Your budget has been blown to pieces by this pandemic. When are you? in ACOG and to get on the same page. Oh. Because according to those emails, you were not on the same page. As far as I'm concerned, and remember I'm also on ACOG, we are on the same page. Okay. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. In a follow-up email, James Benz told us the state's original webinar for the coronavirus relief grant called it a rolling application. He then referred any follow-up questions to the office of the governor. The deadline for our entities to apply is June 15th. The state will then put them through several layers of review before deciding how to split up the money. Let's get outside with live cam. It's going to be an absolutely gorgeous Friday, and then that's going to lead us into a gorgeous weekend. Yeah, picks are perfect weekend yeah. ahead. Uh, we're going to have clear skies, nice afternoons, cool mornings, just like we've had last couple of days. Great morning for a walk. Take a look at this picture on our KSET Connect. Uh, Got the spider web right in the right angle to uh, catch some of that sunlight this morning. This was down in Pleasanton uh, during the morning walk. Uh, we appreciate that picture. As always, you can send them into our KSAT Connect. That's on our KSAT weather app, by the way, at the bottom. You'll see it there at the bottom. You can submit your pictures. Pollen count is in. Not so bad. Molds in the low category, 490. Grass is low at 20. This is a slight improvement from where we were yesterday. We're sort of at that point in the year where we don't see much in the pollen count, thankfully. Temperature wise, 87 noontime today, 93, 3 o'clock, 94 for high sunny skies, northeast chilly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And we're going to talk about where we are rainfall wise for the year and what our deficit looks like now coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Well, let's take a look at Trans Guide. That is I 10 and Hurman, and it looks like uh, it's down to maybe one or two lanes because of construction. So if that's in your route, just remember to take note of that. You ever checked in your attic to see what's up there? You never know what you might find. Apparently a grandmother in California had a lot of Barbie dolls left over from when she was a public speaker. She used the Barbies as props to take out to show 
I guess, young ladies, is that some of this is really not uh, not realistic. Some of these body types that they're talking about, because Barbie did not have a, like a realistic body for a lot of girls. Sure so, does so not. So she would do these these speaking engagements, talking about that, stuffed them up all in her attic when she got through speaking, and her, her granddaughters found them, and she decided to use them for illustrations and some fun for coronavirus. Just some all too relatable quarantine Barbies. Take a look at these. I love these. I, I, my mom has my Barbies in the attic. Look at this essential worker Barbie. She's got the wipes. She's got everything. And then the, this is the, um, is that the every, I don't know. We can't. Oh, that, I don't, I couldn't. That, 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 that's yeah. the gardening Barbie right there. That's the gardening Barbie. I can relate. I did some gardening. Yeah. This is my stretchy pants Barbie. I'm a hundred percent stretchy pants Barbie. Stretchy. <laughs> This is the what day is it edition, Barbie, with the roots growing out on the hair. And then what time is it, <laughs> Barbie? And it's, they're all posted on her Instagram page. And they're just, it's just really funny. She had, a, a way. Uh, she had a first responder Barbie. Yeah, first responder a, Barbie. Uh, Barbie. Oh, Barbie, like Barbie porch photographer. There we had go. a couple of those in San Antonio. She also had a uh, binge watching Barbie that was uh, had a blanket and a box of Oreos and some David, which, and which Barbie are you? Which one do you relate to most? Uh, be the the uh, b the binge watching because she had all the ice cream mm -hmm. and the Oreo cookies and the diet soda. Yep. Yeah, that all works. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm stretchy pants, Barbie. All, all the real bad candy and cookies and then diet soda. We're there with you, Barbie. Perfect. Well, it's 938 and 77 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. The group formerly known as Lady Antebellum has decided to change its name to Lady A. Eric Hernandez explains why and gives us a look at other trending stories coming up after the break. And welcome back. A lot of stories trending this week on our website. One of those stories is about a Dripping Springs man who's been standing on a street corner inviting his community to talk to him about race and racism. Our Eric Hernandez is joining us live from her house with more on this story and others right now on KSAT.com. Good morning, Erica. Good to see you. Good to see you guys and good morning. That 20 year old Dripping Springs man is named Nympha and he has been standing on a street corner the past three days with the sign that simply reads, ask me anything. Nympha says the sign serves as an invitation for his community to talk to him about race and racism candidly. He wanted to start a movement of conversation and helping people understand what the meaning is behind the movement. The University of Dallas student makes himself available from around noon to sunset to talk to neighbors and other residents. Nympha said he has been surprised by how many people have stopped to ask questions and now several people in his community have joined him on his corner as well. In trending entertainment news, the country group Lady Annabellum is changing its name to Lady A. The group announced yesterday the change comes after realizing the word's association to slavery. Group members Hillary Scott, Dave Haywood, and Charles Kelly added they are, quote, deeply sorry for the hurt this has caused and for anyone who has felt unsafe, unseen, or unvalued. The band vowed that their name change is just the first of many steps they will take in a commitment to practice anti-racism. And finally, back here at home, San Antonio Parks and Rec Department has announced that 11 outdoor pools and five splash pads are scheduled to reopen on July 3rd. The pools include the ones at San Pedro Springs Park and Woodlawn Lake Park will remain open through August 9th and the splash pads will stay open through November as usual. According to a city parks and rec spokesperson, specific details on social distancing guidelines at the sites are still being finalized. We have a list of the pools and splash pads that will open in this article. And as always, for all the latest on these trending stories, you can head to our website, ksat.com. David, Sarah? Just in time for the summer heat. I Thank know. Goodness, yes, huh? exactly. Thank you so much, Erica. And uh, Justin, they were talking about opening splash pads and yeah. swimming pools, pools. And I know this weekend it's going to be beautiful to go outside and enjoy some of those. I would imagine they're going to be very busy. Yeah, you got to have pools and splash pads this time of year as these temperatures start to warm up. We're, we're thinking mid-90s all the way into next week, but uh, thankfully there's no heat index that we'll have to contend with. Real quick, too, I want to give a shout-out to Big Bend National Park. Today, it's birthday. Big Bend National Park was created June 12, 1944. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, precipitation-wise, for the month of June, we're at 0 .09, not a lot. We did good in May, not so great so far here in June. So we're below average for the year. We're at 
that is now below average so we're moving back in the wrong direction again there is not a lot of rain in the forecast and this tends to happen here in south texas it's sort of feast or famine right we get a good stretch of rain and then things go dry for a while I would expect that uh, we're going to see some pretty quiet conditions at least for the next week. And that's just because we have our ridge of high pressure in place. And this is that summer heat high that likes to build in over the southern states this time of year. It's going to sit here, move around a little bit. There isn't a whole lot of hope that it breaks down at least all that much, maybe into next week somewhat, but it stays over Texas at least through Monday and Tuesday of next week. And that's going to keep uh, things pretty toasty and pretty quiet. Now, if you're heading down to the coast this weekend, good weekend for it. There is hardly any cloud cover down there. Temperatures will be in the low 90s each and every day. We'll have just a light northerly wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Water should be pretty calm. It's warm, too, so this is, this is good beach weather if you want to head down there. Meantime, here in San Antonio, 77 degrees, 2 points at 55. That's a great number, still in a comfortable category. East northeasterly winds at about 6 miles per hour. Humidity is at 46%. And temperature wise, 73 Comfort, 77 Bandera, 77 in New Braunfels. Everybody's rebounding and has turned the corner after what was a pretty cool morning once again. Yeah, some 50s in the Hill Country even again this morning. Uh, but now we're up to 80 in Pleasanton, 76 Catula, 79 Del Rio and Carrizo Springs. And there's a look at the dew points. Now, not everybody is seeing this bone dry air. Uh, you get into the Hill Country, yes, it is dry here in San Antonio, still dealing with somewhat dry air. But as you get south of here, the dew points do try to jump up a little bit. Now, I don't think that number is correct, but uh, dew points are in the 60s from Victoria to Catua down to Corpus Christi. So that's when you start to feel it a little bit more. So if you're watching us south of San Antonio, eh, there is a little bit of humidity there, but at least it's not just extremely high. Visible satellite picture shows we've got some clouds, maybe a little bit of rain up there in Oklahoma, but nothing nothing here in Texas. It's very quiet. And I mentioned this last half hour, but it is pretty uh, unusual to see the country this quiet. There are no issues whatsoever. A couple showers on the East Coast. We mentioned those a uh, few showers here in Oklahoma and some unsettled weather up across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but all in all, it, there's no severe weather or anything like that. 94 degrees today. Northeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, we'll go 94 again. And on Sunday, we'll go uh, 94 again, and then <laughs> 95, 95, and then Wednesday and Thursday we'll probably go 94. One more again. time. Yeah, One so you get, the, time. you get the idea here. Humidity does return next week, though, guys. Oh, that's a bummer. So it's going to be 94 and 95. Yep. The next seven days. You know, I can handle 94, 95. If you grow up in South Texas, it's when it gets to like the 99s, 103s, exactly. 100% humidity. Ugh. It's 948 at 77 degrees right now. We take a look at today's 9 at 9. That's next. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at stocks. They were up a little higher. They were up around 600 earlier, but they've already dropped down to just a little over 400. But after yesterday's drop of 1,800 points, at least it is in positive territory today so far. Well, San Antonio sees a second wave of coronavirus cases. Health officials are urging people to take the pandemic seriously. And a national park finally reopening after three months. Here's today's Nine at Nine. Another wave of coronavirus cases popping up. We are in a second wave. Take this serious, please. Metro Health Director Dr. Don Emmerich says this is a result of the community letting its guard down, starting around Memorial Day weekend. Hundreds of people in Seattle occupying a now abandoned police precinct. The takeover coming after the Seattle Police Department abruptly surrendered the building after weeks of clashing with protesters. President Trump called on the governor and mayor to take back your city now. If you don't do it, I will. New limits on police in the wake of Breonna Taylor's death. <laughs> Officials in Louisville passing Breonna's law, banning all no-knock warrants. Taylor, an EMT, was killed during a drug raid. The officers involved now facing new backlash over this police incident report, which is nearly blank and missing key details. For five hours, as many as 13 Chicago police officers, including three supervisors, ate popcorn, talked on the phone, even appeared to be sleeping. It's one of the most disgraceful, disrespectful things that I've ever seen. The Chicago Police Department tweeted Thursday it's launched an internal investigation. 
The nation is remembering one of the deadliest mass shootings in U.S. history. That's June 12th marks the four year anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. 49 people were killed and more than 50 others were injured. Starting today, restaurants in Texas can expand to 75% occupancy, but there are guidelines businesses must still follow. Some of the guidelines say the tables must be six feet apart. The 75% really isn't gonna make a difference for us. There's not enough space in the restaurant. After being closed for nearly three months, Yosemite National Park opened early Thursday. One big change, day passes must now be purchased online ahead of time. A world famous zookeeper stepping away from his decades long career. Thursday, the Columbus Zoo in Ohio announced that Jack Hanna is retiring. Hanna's last day will be on December 31st. Remember those Tamagotchi virtual pets from the 90s that lived on electronic devices? They're coming back and pre-orders have already started. They cost $60 and will be available in July. Take a live look at Trans Guide for you. Most of the uh, roads are clear and moving fast. Hopefully not too fast. No one speed. And use your blinker. And use your blinker. Yeah. Use your blinker. <laughs> 81 degrees right now. We're going to be up around 94 this afternoon. Sunny skies. Sunny skies through the weekend. Stays pretty nice. Uh, we may see some more humidity next week, but other than that, it's a quiet forecast. Nice. And it's also pretty quiet in New Zealand when it comes to coronavirus. They were able to completely eradicate it. They have crushed corona in New Zealand. I think, let's see, after 40,000 people tested, 12 days with no one entering the hospital, 40 days since the last community transmission, and 22 days since that person finished their self-isolation, they're looking to restart their economy now. Maintaining strict border controls to keep people from bringing the virus into the country, all restrictions on people and businesses within the country were lifted on June 7th. Officials only ask that citizens keep track of where they've been and who they've been in contact with for contact tracing purposes should another outbreak occur. Just if you're curious, New Zealand has a population of a little over 4.7 million people. Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that many people lived in New Zealand. Yeah. About four point, right about 4.8. Way to go, New Zealand. This is all be, um, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and her cabinet. Um, they were the ones that really pushed for all this social distancing. They were super strict and they kind of become a role model worldwide of how so, to. I was going to say, so now we know you can, you can crush Corona. It, it is, it, it is, a, huh? it is kind of nice to see <laughs> that, that hope there. Yeah, the country hope. actually do it. There we yeah, go. It gets better. So, so this weekend, yeah. practice crushing Corona. Be safe, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fun weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday or at noon. Come back and join us.